Today's sports cars, they're too wide, they're too heavy, they're too complicated and they are way, way too powerful. They're complaints that we hear a lot. And with the onset of EVs, it doesn't look like it's gonna change anytime soon. However, there are still some car manufacturers that do things a little bit differently. Welcome to the Caterham 7 420 Cup. To the untrained eye, it may look broadly the same as every other car built by the British manufacturer, but don't be fooled. This is its most exciting model in years. Designed as a road legal twin to the 420R racing car, it comes with wonderful things such as a SADEV six speed sequential gearbox, a limited slip rear diff, and fully adjustable Bilstein dampers. And while the 420 Cup may have number plates, it is absolutely focused on turning up to your local track day and wiping the floor with just about everything there. Also, lazy jokes about the looks aside, this has got to be one of the prettiest caterums ever produced. The Exocet red paint, satin decals and two-tone wheels complement the familiar silhouette and give the 420 Carp a bold look that encourages you to step closer and admire the endless details. Even the cabin, often the butt of jokes on handmade British cars, looks smart and is properly screwed together, with each metal switch delivering a positive click and clack as you engage the launch sequence and head out onto the open road. Now first off, I should explain that you don't actually have to wear a helmet while driving the 420 Cup on UK public roads, and you can get a wet weather pack which comes with a windscreen but we haven't got that fitted today, and in order for you to hear me, I'm wearing a lid. And actually, that feels pretty appropriate because this little caterum can get around the Alton Park circuit in around the same time as a GT4 racing car. Under that long slender bonnet is the tried and tested two litre Ford Duratec engine, and although it doesn't sound like much, it's the perfect accompaniment for the caterum range. It produces 210 brake horsepower, but because this wide body SV version only weighs about 585 kilograms, that means a power to weight ratio of 359 brake horsepower per ton, which is around about the same as a Porsche 911 GT3. As a result, 0 to 62 miles an hour takes just 3.6 seconds, but because of the wind rushing onto your helmet, and how low you are to the ground, it feels so much quicker than that. It also revs to over 8,000 RPM, but in all honesty, you don't need to hold it for that long because although there's only 150 pounds foot of torque, this car is so light that you can pull hard from almost any revs. The responses are so sharp, so instant, that it feels like your toes are dancing on the throttle body itself. There's no lag in the gearbox either. A Sadev six-speed sequential unit from the 7 racing car, it clonks and clatters at low speed, but once you make that first full ball flat shift, you just keep going back for more and more and more. Purists will call for a manual, but for me, this is better. You still need to rev match coming down through the gears into a corner, but this is just so much more exciting. Fourth, third, second. Oh, it's so physical, yet also very precise at the same time. More cars need a gearbox like this. This muscly mechanical feel isn't just limited to the drivetrain either. The unassisted steering and suede Momo wheel are a tactile delight, while even arbitrary actions such as changing the stiffness of the Bilstein dampers requires the driver to tweak the perfectly machined royal blue metal dial on each corner. There's 10 settings in total, each one capable of shifting the balance and characteristics of your 420 Cup. Should you wish, you can spend hours tweaking the dampers and finding your perfect setup, but no matter what you do, you are going to be in for one of the greatest driving experiences of your entire life. 
The steering is so brimmed with feel and energy that it's almost like Caterham has created its own form of braille. And then coming through the corner, it's all about balancing what little weight there is and waiting to plant that inside front wheel on the apex. Some cars, such as modern day Ferraris, allow you to drive like your Charles Leclerc regardless of your ability. In race mode, the onboard assists and computers are so clever that the gap between what you're doing and what the car is doing is almost imperceptible. In the 420 Cup, everything is down to you. It requires total concentration and absolute commitment to the act of driving. The responses through the steering, through the pedals and through the gearbox are so instant that every single one of your inputs has an immediate consequence. And how many cars can you say that about? However, I'd be telling porkies if I said this car gave you all of the benefits and none of the drawbacks. For starters, it's priced from £55,000. This particular one is £63,000, and for that kind of money, you've got the pick of the finest sports cars in the world. Cars that, incidentally, have luxuries such as cup holders, working doors, and a roof that doesn't leave you feeling miserable when the weather comes over all, well, British. Track days aside, the 420 Cup is best used for short, sharp countryside bursts on a warm summer's day. But even that isn't without its issues. So as you can imagine, getting into and starting up the 420 Cup isn't the work of a moment. And let me show you why. First off, you want to secure your valuables, your picnic, which you'll certainly want. So that can go down there on the passenger seat. That's nice and safe. Then climb in, best way to do it is put your legs in first, then slide all the way down, and then you're in. Then the seat belt, it's not a regular seat belt, obviously, it's a four point harness, at least it's not five. So then you've got to do that up, put that in there, and then the last one over your other shoulder, in there, lovely. The next thing to do is grab the steering wheel, which is here, handily placed, slide that on. You don't have to take it off, but it does make it a bit easier to get in and out, as you can imagine. Right, that's on, that's fine. Now, the key, which goes in down here, the kill switch, which goes in around the outside. Don't let anyone take that, otherwise you're not going anywhere. Plug your phone in, so you know where you're going. There's a little 12 volt socket down there. That's good. Then the helmet. Pop the helmet on. And then all you do, tighten your belts up and then you're pretty much ready. All I need now is my glove. Gloves. So for all the upsides, the 420 Cup is expensive, difficult to get in and out of, and nowhere near as usable as, say, a Porsche Cayman that can be had for similar money. But honestly, if I'm buying a car for the experience and how it makes me feel in here, then I don't care about any of that. You can keep your cup holders and your boot space and your doors. I'd rather have this. Every journey is an adventure to remember. You get to where you're going and your ears are ringing, your picnic's ruined, and chances are your other half will absolutely hate you. But if this sensational bundle of joy doesn't put the biggest grin on your face, then you are as dead inside as the insects on my helmet now.